Welcome to another Tactical Tuesday with Stu. Let's get into some good questions. John brings up an excellent question on how you determine what terrain you can ignore for routing purposes, and also how you save your units when they're going to die for failure to route. We go into a lengthy discussion to show any number of six, seven different opportunities that you can use the rules in the other phases before you get to the route phase to allow you to save your units from failure to route. Very important, it allows you to focus on the route phase in other phases instead of just, oh, he's broken, I don't have to worry about him until the route phase, and then when I get there, oh, shit, he's dead. You know, this avoids that, this saves those units and allows you to continue the fight. So enjoy the episode. Thanks a lot. If you like it, consider linking up with us on Tuesday. A lot of great guys there. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks a lot. But one of the things that I keep coming back to in my own mind, we, we talked about, uh, if I could play with some of the counters here, we had this one uh, unit here, assume he was uh, DM'd at uh, November 7. All right. And uh, we said we could uh, ignore Mike 8 as a possible uh, route uh, location. Uh, I can't wrap my head around that. It's late here on the East Coast. Maybe I'm just missing something that's a basic concept and everybody else understands that. No, 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 I'm, no. I don't... no, no. Yeah. Okay, so in November 7, is there a known good order enemy unit in your line of sight? That's the first thing you have to determine. Yes. Do I do yes. you have to route? First of all, do you have to yeah. route here, John? Uh, well, no, because it's uh, not open terrain. Correct. So you can just sit right there, which is what I did in the first game, right? I just, I just sat right there. You know, if I was going up towards him, yeah. I'm not going mm -hmm. back. I'm just sitting right there. You know, I got, I got a hindrance in front of me. I, I might have two from this guy and this guy, you know, might have two as well. I'm sitting right there. I got 15 of the squads around him. Now, let's say you decide you want to route. Then right. we have to find out where we can route to legally. Can we route to M7 and why not? Well, you can't route there because it's going to place you closer to uh, this unit here. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see. Let me put, um, okay. Not a location we can go to, right? Okay. Is there another destination we can go to? These are there's some building, remember, buildings, woods within 6MF, okay? So are there any building and woods in 6MF and which are the closest in MF, mind you? Well, it'd be uh, Mike 8. Mike 8? Any other locations yeah. within two movement factors? Yeah, 07. 07. What about these guys down here? How far are they away? Well, this is not one. What? Four. Well, so four. The, the next one is N9 is four. Right. So, so these are... I guess L7 is technically four away as well, but I think that would be also moving closer. Right, so we're going to take this. We're going to put that there. That's one of our destinations. That's a target destination because that, that you know the British thing or whatever the hell French or whatever. That's a quote target destination that we're looking at. So these are our targets initially. Okay. So normally people would say, okay, that's a close to an MF. Boom, go right to it. What are we forgetting? What are you forgetting, John? Obviously, quite a bit because I remember the conversation earlier said we could safely ignore right. my gate, but right. I, I okay. didn't understand why. Well, that's fine. That's fine. That, nothing wrong with that. The reason why you can ignore both of these locations is how far is how far is October seven and Mike eight from L four? Our guy that's caused that that essentially allows us to route. Well, the DM allows us to route, but. How far is this location and that location from him? And us. And us. Four, and us. Four hexes. Four hexes. Four, four, and four. Right? Yes. Yes. So therefore, since we're not increasing the distance from an enemy unit to that destination, we could ignore that destination that normally would be required for us to route to. Okay? So normally... If if uh, if this unit, well, let me say, let me put um, let me put a different terrain feature in there. Let's assume this. Let's assume this right here is woods hex. Okay. 
Okay. But, but brown splotch is a wood. It's like brush. Or, that's not brush, but it's a woods hex. This is a woods hex because I don't, I don't have a woods overlay. So now in this situation, what are the legal destinations that we could route to? We can't go here, right? Right. So, in, oh, sorry. Can, can you guys hear? Can you, oh. yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So this so, is two. This is two. And this will be two as well, right? Two as well. Correct. Uh huh. So if we chose to ignore, and that's what part of the rule is, John, is a lot of guys don't go to that. Can you have to just continue reading, and it'll be hopefully in SK the rule book and ASL rule book, it'll be close within that same paragraph of rules description. Read the entire paragraph because there's always stupid exceptions. We can ignore these hexes, but let's say we ignore these hexes, and if this was a woods, where would we have to go? Well, you'd have to go to uh, October 8th. Right, because that will be the closest to the MF. Is, yeah. it, is it further away from L4? Yes. Okay, so therefore we can't ignore it. So we can't ignore right. it and go down here. So in that case, we'd be stuck. We'd have to go back here. But the same yeah. token, by that same token, is a clone. Oh, no, 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 don't clone you. That's another problem. Okay. So we have that woods here, right? Yeah. We have that woods there. Okay. This is uh, five hexes away, and it's within two mm -hmm. MF, right? Right. Two MF here, two MF mm -hmm. here. Dot, dot, we can ignore, we can ignore as our as our closest destination hex, right? And this one we can go to. All three of those hexes are legal route destinations. So, if we okay, route... that's what that's, that's kind of what I was hung up on. I, I I didn't know if it was one of those things that you shall ignore it or you may ignore it. Right. So he, he could go to M eight if he wanted to. It'd still be a legal route destination, right. but he doesn't have to because it doesn't extend the distance from the known enemy unit. Right. And so when when uh yeah exactly and so. Uh, it was, if that wasn't there, because it doesn't extend it, he can ignore it, and therefore he can select a nine because it is further. Or let's say both of these are equidistant and no other terrain on the map exists, right? Except for like one woods like way over here or something. He can ignore this one, but this one is also ignorable, but he can still choose to go there, right? Because he ignores one doesn't mean he ignores them all that are ignorable. I can ignore that one, just say, oh, I'm just going to go over here instead. Instead of, instead of this one, I'm going to go over here. They're both potentially okay. ignorable, but they're both routable. Now, taking that, take, also taking that into account, this is ignorable, right? But this is a woods hex, and this is a wood hex, okay? Now, what can we do? We can say, I'm going to go to M8, even though it's not further away, but that's my destination hex. So I route to my destination hex and say, hey, Holy shit, what have I found here? I can continue on to other route uh, compatible terrain. I can continue on the route of compatible terrain and look where I can go. Wow. I can route okay. forward. Of course, that that this needs to be there. If this were not yeah. there, I, 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 could, yeah. I, I couldn't do that. Well, if that's not right. there and this isn't there, those delete, right? Now that's what's created the situation that we're in. This I'm is 2-4. Sure. That will be then our closest terrain because these guys are six away. That's two. This will be two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six. This is four away, but can we go to L7? No, it places you closer to the known enemy unit. Right. Not a routable hex. So that's why. And again, we, we kind of wanted to go down here because that's further away from these idiots. And that's in safe terrain. And it's moving two hexes more forward to a two, four, six, at least one hex more forward. And then later on, we can just bypass this, then do some sort of bullshit like this. At least gets one hex more forward, you know? So that's the, that's the idea behind that. But yeah, just because you can't ignore them doesn't mean you have to, or just because you can't ignore multiple ones doesn't mean you have to ignore them all. You can still choose one of the ignorable hexes. It's like, well, I don't need to go there. I'll just go here instead. You know, even, okay. though, even though one, let's say, even though, let's say the star, because I deleted them already. Even though you let's say 08 is a further away, you don't have to go to the further away. You can still choose the one that's the same distance. So all legal destinations. Okay. All legal destinations. So 
hopefully that's a good question very good question because um that that that's easily confused As a matter of fact in um one of my games my opponent um remember asl are 20 plus years guys asl are 20 plus years we were in a situation where it was exactly like this where does this unit route to let's let's say uh, let's say i'm over here and he's here where can where does he route to this was the situation out 10 uh, okay this is a, this is a let's uh this is like a that's a that's like a non route that's a swamp so that's like oh um, you okay. can't so but yeah, yeah yeah if that was a wood so that's that's not a that's not a that's not a possibility so now where can he route to at least initially because both guess r7 r7 or n9 and nine can you route to both of them can you route to both of them gentlemen hey, one or the other uh n9 takes how much to get to? One, two, three. Oh, four. yeah versus three versus right three now, so what he did was two four because his leader was over here, right? <laughs> his leader was over here. He wanted to get this leader. And I said, whoa, 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 hold the phone. You know, hold the phone. I said, that's four. This is three. You got to route back. So what happened? He got fucked. Now he's four X's from his leader. So even remember, when you're moving, anticipate being broken wherever the hell you're being, being moving into. And then, you know, sometimes... If you know, if I want to move this location versus this location, let's say the modifier or this open ground versus that open ground, and this guy's going to shoot at me, you know, should I should I move here or should I move here? Depends on okay. If I break, will I have to route down or let's say if I broke over here, do I have to route up and get screwed? Sometimes you route up and and you have to s split from them. Remember, remember back in S fifty five guys, we were covering that routing location. Where my opponent wanted to route up into the building up on the hill. Yeah. That was four. And instead of doing that, let's say this is the hill. Instead of going up to the hill, he had to route away from his leader and across open ground. Was this unit going to be ever rallied by that unit when my Russians were all up his ass? No. Nope. Not at all. That's what you have to be thinking about. You have to think about if I break in that location, where can I go? At that point, what he could have done was, uh, I don't know. I, 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 didn't, I haven't analyzed it from that point. But don't essentially, don't get yourself into a pickle where you can't route in a particular location. You know, if your leader's right next to you, he might be four movement factors away, whereas the woods, you know, closer to his units that you can't see... You know, it might be a possibility that you have to route forward right to those guys. Let's see, these guys are put positioned back here, right? Yeah. Right? We got a 237 right here. My guy moves up here for whatever reason. Again, if I break here, where am I routing? Well, that's not a good position. Let's go. If I break here, is it safer here or safer here to break? Which, which location do I want to move into? This gives me cover, kudai. It's like grain, just like grain. This is open ground, two minus two. I'm moving here, two minus one, two minus two. Which location do I want to break in? It's not, just give me, just give me your opinion. Where do you want to break in? Do you want to break here? You got cover? You're less likely to break there, right? You're less likely to break here because of the modifiers. But if you do, when he rolls his bullshit three, you know, and you roll your bullshit 11 because it's Vazel, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you tell me the difference. If I break here, where am I routing to? Either low crawl or full, full on route. If I break there, where am I routing Q4. to? Q4. Q4. Right. That's three, right? Nothing else is in three. You can you go full on route, pass your task check, and you're back here. And he's out of range, you know, so that's cool. So it's gonna be one plus, you know, one, whatever. So he's like, yeah, that's 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 cool. Now you're up at his grill, right? 
you break here, where are you going to route to? Yeah. Where's he going to route? I guess you can go, guess you can go to Mike 4. You have to go to Mike 4. Yeah. And let's say uh let's say those guys because it's because it's because it's not starter kit four, I'm gonna clone this guy and get rid of that shit. And just say he's there. Just say he's there. You know, this, mm -hmm. th these don't exist. Those, those are off the map. This is the difference. He's there. That's it. It's a half squad or a leader. Doesn't matter. That's a that's a stupid leader, right? It's a ten minus one. Uh where's the hip? Uh hip. That's a leader. He moved his lead. Oh, he, he breaks you here. Bullshit three. You bullshit eleven. You're out here. Let's say these are uh, these are all open ground. Let's see. Let's see. These are open ground. You can't get over here without being. What 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 problem are you looking at there? Let's say there are some you know some something like that, or there's a unit further up here or something like that. That wasn't in your LOS. You are now forced to go to this location. Do you want to be closer to that guy right there? Can he shoot you? No. Who cares? But you have to then continue the route. And let's say you moved here, which puts you in a position of like line of sight of this guy. Because right now, this guy's out of line of sight. Let's assume these are woods, right? Let's assume both these are woods. They're green. It's easy to say they're woods. I don't see him, right? That line of sight is blocked. I don't see that unit. But if you move who here and you break, you know, if you anticipate him taking that shot, definitely look at where you need to route to before you move there. You know, I'll have to route here. Then what happens? You tell me what happens. Do it, first of all, first of all, do I have to continue to route from that location? Yeah, yes. You're gonna route yeah. Yes, you do. Right. Where can I route to when the ten minus one becomes known to me? You haven't got anywhere you can route to. Why? No, Why no, is back, that, Tony? Back where you came. Well, maybe in four. Can you go back to in four? Um, I'm yeah, not sure you could legally do that. Can you? In starter kit. There's no rule against backtracking. That would be there. really odd. I guess you could. I guess you could. Um, but, but in that case, um, yeah, I guess you'd have to. You, I think you'd have to backtrack to N four. All right, all right, all right, all right. Screw you, Tony. We're, we're, <laughs> I'm gonna put that yeah. guy down there. <laughs> just, <laughs> clever examples, yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So let's do this. So he has to route here, right? Here, he goes back here. Here, he has to go right here, and then as Tony suggests or Tony knows, he's gone. He's gonezo because now he has LOS to that unit and he can't route to N three, even though he routes out of his LOS. He's routing closer to a now a now discovered unit. And then he can't route back here because he's getting closer to this guy again. And he can't stay there because he's adjacent to a known enemy unit. Doesn't matter whether he's got firepower or not. That's a leader. He'll screw you. This guy explodes. Simply because of the, 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 the selection of, of, of hex you want to go into. In that case, you know, you obviously might want to think about as Americans or whatever. Can I get smoke somewhere? If this guy's right here. Can I move this guy adjacent to drop smoke on him? A, it might draw fire, and if it doesn't draw fire, at least I get a free smoke chance. At that point, you know, I then I then I can make my push to here because I am in a better position to be able to you know survive that shot. So again, as you're moving, obviously this one's got slightly better cover than O5, but well, in this case, let's say this doesn't exist, um, slightly better cover than O5. Knowing where you need to go when you break, because you will break. I mean, your stack of, you know, your stack of 800 units. You know, if, if this guy moves here versus here, and if these guys break, all of them break, they all die. Because if the leader breaks and all these guys break, they all die. Because they have to route here. And then he says, oh, that's only two, four, that's only eight victory points I just scored on you for you breaking. Straight up eight victory points. Guess who's gonna win that scenario? These orange guys. That's this is very difficult to overcome. A loss of eight squads 
in failure to route, and I'm sure some of you guys have experienced that already, uh, this is extremely difficult to overcome. Is it much more difficult for him to kill these four units with firing on them? Yes, much more difficult. Far easier to make him route here and die. Far easier. Matter of fact, that's you might consider that in your defenses is putting a guy behind the terrain, having some guy here, having some sort of bullshit over here. Maybe this was, maybe the leader was over here. Maybe he broke and he routed back there and he rallied last turn. And you've got this. He says, oh, that's a 237. I'm going to go kick his ass. I'm going to kick his ass in close combat. So I move here, take a shot, a gack, you know, 11, 10, 10, 10, and they all die. Where you wanted to go here and jump this guy in close combat, and with your giant American muscles, you just like 85 to 1 in close combat, and he's just vaporized. Him and his whole, fam- <laughs> him and his whole family back in Tokyo are just vaporized, you know? Um, but if you break here, you die. That this is what you need to consider when you when this now if he's here right if he's there eh, you might not go there because you might want to avoid the four minus one but if you sit your guy up here and if you've got you know another shot let's say this guy was a full squad here that was a four firepower squad you know that's like a real unit right so let's see a real unit were there right you know in that case you definitely probably don't want to take the four minus two you might take the four even or four minus one. You know, but that this is the situation that if you present this situation to the opponent, he's most likely going to go to N4. And if you get that shot, any any of these broken units will die. Say you get say you get one squad, he dies, gone. So if but but if but if this two three seven's up in his grill, or if that's a four four seven, right? You know, he might not even want to move there. He might. You trickle up. He might just smoke or anything like that. But if you bait him, if you bait him into that move, let's say it's a, let's say it's a stone building. Let's say it's a giant stone giant stone building, and this whole damn thing is a stone building. But you're over here, and he wants to get in that stone building and kick your ass. Well, you know, boom, boom, break a break here. The same thing as a as a four kia. Exactly the same thing as a four kia. How do you get a four kia? You roll a three on the thirty six chart, gentlemen. A four minus one can essentially be the same thing as a three on the 36 chart because the end result is the same. They all die. Whether they die this phase or they die in the route phase, it don't matter. They all die. Now, in that case, what what does the American do? Let's say the American is screwed. Let's say the, this is a situation, and you will find yourself in a situation. Let's say these guys break, and then you say, okay, Stu's been pounding my ass about where to route, how to route, all this other bullshit route. I'm kind of sick and tired of his shit. But, oh, wait. I reflect upon it, and I see the M4 is, gonna, is going to be my demise. What can you do to correct I, I want to call it an error it may not be an error what what can you do to circumvent elimination of these units and this is the next step john this is the next step of the same route rules move into a position where it will give you a good route path if that's not possible and in some cases it's not possible how can we circumvent these guys from getting eliminated How do we do that? Anybody? Break break the guy in N6. Break this bastard right here. Yeah, gotta go after him. You got you at that point, it's balls to the wall. You're sending absolutely everything against this guy that can still route, mind you. <laughs> that can still route away. You know, because you don't want these guys to break, because he's subsequent first firing, you know. He first fired and boom, he you know, this is gonna be four four firepower shots. Once he once he subsequent first fires, you're on his ass. You are up this guy's grill. Okay? Now, right? And this is kind of what I did to uh, in the first scenario. You know, he, he uh, my guy's broke in the front line, and I didn't want to run him back, so what do I need to do? I need to break the guy next to him. This is the same situation. He just happens to have range. Now, yeah. being, being a Japanese unit, yeah. Uh, 
Um, I'm going to assume he's a regular unit. Japanese units really cause a big ass problem because if he breaks, are we firing one shot on this guy? Or are we firing about 15 different shots against this unit? 15 because of the step reduction. 15 because of the step reduction. He stripes, we die. Guess what? He breaks again. He stripes, we die. Stripes, we die. Guess what? He breaks again. Half squad, we die. We have to break him three times to save our guy. If he was any other nationality, we only have to break him once. And still, if he was any other nationality, I might go... Uh, hell, I, if it was any other, if it's seven mod modifier, I would go six in the advanced phase, eight in the advanced phase, eight, I would get three attacks, eight, eight, six. I would not go 12 and 12. I would go eight, eight, six. That was like a 95% chance of breaking the son of a bitch. Because you have that extra roll. You have to take multiple shots. Don't do the 800 firepower because when you roll your 12 and you cower down from a 24, that makes it a 24 to a 20 and you roll a 12 with no modifiers is a pin task check you well a pin you just can't enter dick so that actually might help you but if you get that pin task check off the one roll versus you know a seven seven a seven 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 on the eight eight and six chart what do you get eight is a one morale check eight is a one morale check six is a normal morale check one one normal is he gonna pass Let's see, one, one, normal, fail, pass, pass. He failed one of those. He, he essentially passed two of them. So when you're in a desperate situation, you need to maximize the results. Now, if that's a stone building, do you take them combined? More than likely you do. But if he's Japanese in a stone building, you've got a big problem. You, know, you could kiss these guys goodbye. So again, when you're, when you're in that situation where if you notice that your guys are going to fail you to route during your movement phase, when they break, immediately look at, okay, where do I need to go? Where do I need to route these guys? Not in the route phase. Don't don't look for that. Pause. Take two seconds. Say, this is the route phase. Where do I need to go? Here, here, here. If they're eliminated, okay, if they're going to be eliminated from failure to route, can I use the rules and do something about that? Also, what else can you do? Let's say, let's say, let's, let's say this guy is, let's say this guy is in a stone building and he is Japanese. He's a badass Japanese unit, right? Okay, stone building. Stone building, we're not going to have enough firepower. The best we're going to get, I mean, we're looking at six plus three, eight plus three. We're looking at fours and threes to, to be able to have this guy like a normal morale check. And uh, let's say we're, let's say we're in this sort of position where, we're, we're semi close to other units. At that case, what you do is you take care of this guy. You move units up. You know, this guy can still route even if he breaks there because he's not going to go over here. Uh, that's two, four. Uh, actually, he might. Actually, two, he go there. But then this location is no further away from that one. So he can go three, four, five, six. So he could technically go up and then route back. This guy couldn't. You're Americans. You have smoke too. Don't forget that. You can yeah. smoke the guy and in six. Yeah, yeah. So we go. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. smoke him before you move there to make this a much better move, and that would be very good. Or uh, smoke but, him so he can't interdict you. Correct. Uh, well, no, the smoke, the smoke won't matter. The smoke's gonna be gone at the end of the movement phase. Well, that's right. That's right. right. So, um, so in this case, let's say we have units within within striking range of this guy, and say he's in grain. In that case, we we can get that's and he's first fired, right? All right, this guy's first fired. Remember, make sure you first fire. Let's say let's say all these guys are together. So, if he can, let's say this guy is here and he has to move here before he gets to this location. Let's say we have uh, two broken, uh, like a broken one broken leader and two squads. This that way we don't have to worry about overstacking. We've got that there, and these guys can get over here and fire. A 12 even shot, and let's say this is a half squad already. I'm just going to half squad him, right? We only have to get rid of the half squad. That's it. How are we going to get... We can't get. We can't break this guy. He's in a stone building, and he's a full Japanese badass, right? This guy, we can't, we can't get to. He's way too far away. We can't do anything about that. But we can react to this guy instead of this guy because he's in shit terrain. 
What are we going to do to get across there? What are we going to do to make sure these guys get there 100% of the time? Without getting shot. That's a hit. Without getting shot. How are we getting our 666s six, six, up in this guy's grill? Move your half squad to 06 or 07. Move first. this guy right here. What does that do, gentlemen? Restricts his firing shot. That's right. This guy's screwed. This guy cannot fire at any further unit. If you moved here, he'd be two hexes. He'd be two hexes. He subsequently first fires and rips that guy a new one at two minus two. Six morale, you're going down. Simply assault move this guy here. That's all you have to do. Hell, in that case, you can go counter exhaust. One, two, three, four, five. Try and get behind him or something like that. Doesn't really matter. As long as you're adjacent to this guy, you know, either bait another shot or get adjacent to him. That way, whoops, that way he finally he gets final fired. And uh, he can't do anything about him. And then we move our guys in here. And one, two, three, let's say, hell, we're counter exhausting four, five. And now we've got uh, 18, 19, let's see, it'd be seven each. 21 firepower plus one. Do you think that guy's going to break? He's going to break. And, um, and if he, if he doesn't break, what what do we do? How do we change the equation here, gentlemen, in starter kit? In starter kit, what did we just do right here? Look you at M4. You overstack the hex. You overstack the overstack hex. The hex. Can't I can't route there. Right? So can we route to L4 then? Is L4 our destination? Yeah, but you won't die there, right? You, well, you'll continue to K5, right? Correct. Correct. Line. We couldn't route here. Can't do it. Overstacked. I mean, we, we end uh well, we could technically low crawl here, but that's pretty bad. But but we're not forced to going here. We can go here, here, see this guy, and continue to route to safety. This guy doesn't exist. So overstack the hex so I can't move into it. Block these sons of bitches from going to their death. And and it can help. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. You're, are you being desperate here? Hell yeah, you are. But you know, uh, but is it that? Is it honestly that desperate? Because this unit's going to move here first. Order of movement. Order of movement. He's moving here first. Freezing this guy. He's frozen, and he says, "Shit." He's going to charge my guy, and then one at a time. No stack movements, no stack movements, because you can't move stack movements because this is overstacked, all right? You have to move it at this point one at a time. One, two, three. Is he going to fire? We don't give a shit. He's got one firepower, one. That's going to be too even. Do we care about that? Let's say he breaks. I don't give a shit about that. Food's here? Okay, thanks. And then we take the next unit. William said that the easy up is in his house. Okay, thanks. So the next unit, we go here. And then there's a one residual there. Let's say the first unit breaks. We go in there. Do we care about the one residual? One plus one. Or one even. Don't care about it. Can he subsequent first fire? Sure. It's going to be one even. Don't care about it. Next unit moves in there. Same thing. In that case, we get 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 no honor fires. Is he going to break? Probably. Probably going to break. But what have we done? This guy, if he breaks, this guy doesn't have to route. He's safe. Is it a risk? If he if he breaks, he, he's in the same predicament as these guys. Can't route back that way. Can't route back this way. He will die unless these guys break. But if he breaks, he doesn't have to route just like we covered in the first scenario. Just like we covered in Costly Baptism. Broken unit. Don't have to route. Okay? Broken unit. You don't have to route, gentlemen. Not a good order enemy unit. Can we route beside him? No. But we don't want to have to route from him. This move saves, in this situation, four units. So, 
Know your sequence. Don't just move willy nilly. Let's say you have all your guys up in the front. When you when you when you guys break, it's like okay, how do we react? Pause. Pause your move. Reflect upon where you need to route to. Because let's say these guys can route. Let's say they can route. Okay. But you have to route them in a real shitty position. Let's say you let's say this is like a let's say you've got clone clone. Okay. Boom. Let's say there's a two four four sevens up there. Let's say we can route like 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 uh like over here or something like that, right? Let's just say we could route to that location. Our giant stack moves over there. What's he gonna do? He's probably gonna try and surround him in his movement phase. And then they die. So again, we're stop when you're when you when a big stack like this breaks or any unit breaks, that's important to you, whatever. Figure out where he needs to go right then and there. And then all the other units that you have in the back. Remember, move your hard. Your hard, decisive actions, you might want to consider moving first. All the easy moves are easy. They're, the, they're all going to fall into place. But a hard move like this can change some of your easy moves into essentially reactions to shit that goes wrong. So once you have this situation here, shit's going to go south really quick. But knowing what you know, you can... You can circumvent this unit, all these guys' destruction by knowing the principles of first fire. Okay? Can I fire anything else? Nope. Knowing the principles of routing, where do I need to route to in priority? And can I route beyond that? Can I ignore this? Can I not ignore that? And also, essentially knowing the principles of movement. If I overstack this hex, he can't route there. That eliminates that particular position as a route location. Now, if there was a woods over here, right? What you, what you just did now is a uh, uh, give me a woods. This is a woods. P four is a woods. All right. Before we had this. Get that shit out of there. We had this two, three. We change this into overstacked. You can't move there. What does that do? Three, three. Equidistant from both units. We ignore this one. We go here. And how do we get how do we get here? How are we gonna route there, gentlemen? What's our path? Don't screw this up. Yep. Through 04. 05. 05, right? 04 is closer, isn't it? Is uh, it we're going here. This this uh, how, how many three. movement factors is this? Three? Can you see the two squads up in 01? Nope. Oh, From you this can't. location oh, yeah. you can't. But yeah, we overstack four. this, which eliminates that location. So our locations that we're targeting are this one and this one. Those are the only two other destinations that we have to go to initially because they're, they're both within three movement factors. What is the path we're going to take to P4? Go through O4. We're going through O4, not being interdicted, and then we can continue to move on if that's what we desire. But if we move on, what happens? We're an LOS to these bastards. So that's again, again, another, again, another consideration. Don't just go two, four, six. Oh, I'm done. And then, oh, then, and then, Brett Favre, oh shit. You know, then you saw that. Nowhere, nowhere he could fire on you next turn to keep you DM'd. But you're going, you're going through the, or you're going through this. Are you getting closer to these units? From N4. Yes. Is that legal? Yes. Yes. Why? You're not stopping there. No. Nope. You, you can't see him. Legal, you can't see legal him. Destination. We can't see him. This guy doesn't exist. Just like just like we had to route this direction, we can't see him. That was the problem. Once you see him, let's say we routed here. Now we saw him. Now we can't route that direction. Then we have to route back. That's why. That's why Scott was <laughs> Scott was perceptive to uh, screw me over an M6. So, uh, so that's why I moved him down here, because otherwise I think you can bounce like that. I'm pretty sure, uh, for some reason, something in the back of my ASL, you know, confusing rule mind that you may not be able to enter the same location. But anyway, but that's not the point. We'll worry about that later. But we're going to 04 to avoid the interdiction to get into our rally terrain. Let's say our nine minus two is coming up to help us, something like that. So, uh, simple movement, simple decision, right? These guys 
simple decision. This isn't this is an easy, easy move. I'm here. Do I move here? Or do I move here? I go here because it's a better train. It could cause lots of problems. Just saying. And when those problem when it, when it hits the fan, then don't say, okay, I'm just gonna route here. Or, or a lot of guys, guys, a lot of times they'll just route back this way. Uh, but legally, you have to route the M4. So, knowing that when you break, again, ref just re just refreshing. Knowing that when you break, this this is where you're going to be. And say, okay, where am I going to route from there? On oh, this guy is unbroken. If he were broken, you could still do that, mind you. But he's not. Uh, where's that break? So if he's not broken, then you die. So knowing that, then you can make changes to your attack to help this unit out to not get him killed. At that point, pretty much your entire attack stops, and then your entire your entire turn becomes a rescue these three or four units. Turns into a rescue operation for all intents and purposes. And guess what? Sometimes, if it turns into a rescue desperation operation, you're actually in a better position. Let's say you were going to move these guys like like right down here. It's like, ah, I'm just going to willy-nilly fire over here. But these guys get over there. Maybe they turn out to be in a better position. Now they could fire back on these guys. You know, stops them from moving across over here. You know, yeah. They're in a better position than they would be over here. Those guys are free to move there. If these guys are up in their grill. Hell, that's a... Jesus, that's a that's a 12, 12 down one. You know? Is he going to take that shot? Eh, maybe. But, you know... And that, that will lead to uh, uh, levels of aggression that you'll discover that will work. Although, those levels of aggression were created by levels of desperation in terms of trying to save our units. Does anyone have any questions about what we cover? Anything! I don't care how minuscule of... That seems kind of fuzzy, Stu. Um, we can go over it. Because this in this example, what do we, what do we cover? We covered choosing a better obviously the obvious move may not be the best move two route destinations is important to realize in each of the destinations that you move into where you have to go the third thing is if you're on the defense positioning positioning your units up front or positioning them in a quote weaker location to maybe bait someone into this move so that's a defensive posture the third thing is those guys got a route take into our movement rules into consideration and stack the hex where we can't violate over stacking principles and then also like say if we have other train back here blocking that and then making other train available to us by blocking that or breaking units so we can route there and stay there same thing here breaking units or breaking units uh, and then choosing the right path a a safer path versus an interdicted path to our destination so lots of different little things go into play in this very simple example of you just moving units forward you're just moving a guy forward he wants to do some damage advanced fire phase he gets a lucky roll you get your shit rolls and then you're stuck in a pickle you you really really want to avoid this and again that's another example this is the prime example of moving one unit at a time. One unit at a time. If that's all the further he's going, or if he's just going home to two four, you you you, you don't stack you don't stack these guys, dude. You got guys, you don't stack these guys. I don't care if that's a one plus one shot. Um, if they can make it there individually, then you make it there individually. Especially if it's like a one firepower, you just you take you take that residual because you, knowing what you know that if you break here in one lucky sh one lucky shot. He's not going to roll three lucky shots. He might roll one. Then you go there. And let's say let's say you move one guy there, and he's still in that predicament. Well, he'll where he'll die when he routes. Guess what? what guess what? These guys can do. They can get closer to this guy and blast him. You know, he'll have twelve firepower in the advanced fire phase, minus one. So that's going to be a twelve plus two. Let's say it's a regular unit, or these guys can can uh two. Oops. Not as, oh my god. It's not supposed to pick them all up. I don't have that selected. Two, four, two, four, two, four, and do what these guys were supposed to be doing. That that came from the backside over here that was involved in your plan. Now these guys can just move here, which is what you planned in the first place, and just take the simple, you know, move up one hex and point blank fire him. These guys 
maintain their same plan, whereas this guy becomes the savior of the eight, of the broken unit by moving independently. Sometimes you can move as a stack, not a problem. I don't problem with that, but if you move as a stack, you're going to get shot as a stack, and you're going to be rolling three tens in a row, and then you lose the game. You just simply lose the game. In my other game, you get two. If you get two leaders in your OB, and one of them breaks because he's in a stack, it makes a juicy target. That's the that's that is the first action that you can do to lose the game. Simple as that. So, um, a lot of shit in that one. Again, it's it's uh, I, you know I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but you know we need to eat some dinner. We need to slice that horse up and put him on the barbecue. But uh, <laughs> but. You know, take into consideration that, you know, broken units, you don't ignore them until the route phase. We can save these guys. These guys are savable. You know, realize that they will die. Realize right here that they will die in the route phase. And if, they, if you realize in the movement phase, or even if you forget it later, and let's say you had, let's say you had moved some guys over here because you were going to attack. Let's say you moved some guys over here and you were going to attack this, these guys over here. Do you attack these guys or do you try to break him? You try to break this guy in your in your advanced fire selection attacks. Because if he's broken in the advanced fire, then this guy can go route and stop. And he's fine. Do you want to kill these guys? Yeah, that's why you move there. That's why you move there. But you might need to take that shot if this is an extremely important unit, like a 9 minus 2 or something like that. Are you going to get blasted here and likely break? Yeah, that's real danger. This is a real position where you need to say, is this more important than this? And sometimes it's better to let this guy die and manage to break these units. If you break these units, okay, I'm just gonna, if you break those units, right? Does this guy still die? Yes, because it's still an enemy unit that you can't route closer to. But at least you gain something. At least you gain the, either breaking or, or potential dying killing of these units because you have a, he's going to route he's going to route back here but at least you break those units and and not you know this these guys die I mean, it's a decision you have to make those are just one of the game decisions that you have to make so again you can still go with whatever plans you have and um, do what you need to do so um, so odd concept but sometimes, you know, defending your broken units is very important. Sometimes you can't defend them all the time. But um, in that case, try to make the best of a situation and force something else. Try to break somebody that causes him, especially if they have to be adjacent, um, to be gone. So, again, nationality distinctions, just like we had in the beginning. We don't want to charge all of our tie units in the, in the residual because they're just going to get shredded. But the Americans, we can do that. Japanese... We can't break them easily like everybody else. It takes a long time to get these guys into a non-functional state in terms of firepower. And that's a huge distinction in your Japanese games when you guys get into Star Trek at 4. You know, or you you play ASL or whatever. Anytime you play the Japanese, the game rules change. What you can do changes. You either have to be much more aggressive or much more deceptive when you're playing against the Japanese. So... Uh, any questions, gentlemen? And then I think we'll just call it a session there. I mean, geez, it's all 8 o'clock. I just talked to that in much. But I think this is very important. I wanted to cover the three lessons of how I chose routing in all of my games differently. And also in this particular situation, John, with your brilliant question that you came up here, this spurred on this. I think this is actually probably the most important part of our session today is this example instead of all my bullshit before. My bullshit before was just kind of examples of how to incorporate routing into your game plan. This is actually how to save your guys from dying where they will die 100% of the time. Well, not 100%, but if you break this unit, he won't die, will he? So, yeah. things to think about in your games, gentlemen. And um, every anytime you break a unit, just pause the game. And then act like you're going to route right there. Act like you're going to route right there. It doesn't take long. You guys know exactly where they're going. All you guys are rounding experts here. You know exactly where they're going now. You know? I don't see you guys giving me any errors in your routing in your routing um destinations here at all. You know, I see far more ASLers give incorrect answers than you guys. 
You guys know your shit, okay? We just need to we just need to go the next step. And and uh, I didn't I hadn't actually thought about the overstacking. I don't know where that came from. To be honest with you, it just kind of came to me. I didn't even think about that. It's like okay, if I cram that weight, starter kit, you can't overstack. And and, and ASL does a little bit something differently too. But we won't go to that. But overstacking, don't have to go there. We put up a big wall. So incorporate the entire game concept. First fire, adjacent. Can't fire again. We get our units up there safely. Okay. Stuff like this wins you the games. Uh, or helps you win the game. Or saves you saves units that you could possibly try to win the game with. Uh, but just slow it, slow it down. You might get pissed that all your units got broken. You might not see that they're all gonna die, but say, okay, you know, let me just pause. Take a drink of my beverage, you know, kick the cat, kick the dog, whatever. Come back to the table, and then and then see what's going on, and um, and then just step back and relax. It's fine. Everyone will give you that money. It's like you know losing your big tank, you know, when you don't see the shot. Just take a pause, just chill, and then just see see how things how things differ, and then you take that next step. And that next step, in this case, like I say, if we are aggressive, if Ortiz takes his buddies in there, that next step could actually. With this unfortunate stuff happening here, that next step could actually create an opportunity for victory, which we didn't see before because of our guy broke. We want to save him. So we're going to do something different. Oh, shit. It opens up a whole new world of opportunity. So stuff like this, you may not see. A lot of players don't see stuff like this. Uh, will it work? I don't know. You got to roll some dice for it to work. But that's that's the key concept. I like Again, I like this. I like this example. Uh, of all the different shit that we're covering, all the different concepts that we're covering in this specific example. Um, not simple, but one step at a time, gentlemen. Just take your time. You're not going to think of all this stuff in two seconds. You're going to pause. Okay, if I can do this, I can do that. I can, I can make sure he doesn't interdict, or I can make sure he can't fire on me. I can move some units up and see what I could. Can I get enough units there? You don't know. All this stuff kind of rolls in your head. And um, if, if it's a doable plan, then it's doable. You know, if you want to ignore that and send Ortiz up here to at least make him pay, you know, continue with your plan. Sometimes you're just going to bite the bullet. But, um, again, uh, not that you guys do, not that I've seen you guys do. Stack movement versus non-stack movement causes a loss of one unit, which is two victory points versus eight victory points. And in a victory point scenario, which this is, you just lost the game. Um, I won this game, well, I won this game with like a six victory point lead. If something like this happened to me in the game, I would have lost it in one action. One action loses you the game. This is that one action. So take that into your games, gentlemen. Um, I wish you luck in your games. Uh, how uh, how are you guys doing in the game of the month? I see a couple of completions there. Scott, you did the Dead of Winter one, right? Uh, no, uh, you and I were talking about. Charlie yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll hit that one up. We'll get that going by the end of the month. That's like five or six turns. I've never played that scenario before. Um, cool. We could hit that up. I think uh, just to throwing another example in there and throwing another log file, uh, just to see how it goes, was great. Um, and then what I'll do, you know, at the end of the month, we'll uh, combine all stuff together. If you guys need uh, other players to look for, or if you want to play somebody else, you know, if you want to do another game of ad hoc, if you care to do another game of ad hoc, but take the other side, whether it gets the same player or a different player, you're welcome to do that. You're not restricted to one game of it. It's just that, you know, and, and for all intents and purposes, that actually might be a better learning experience for the same player playing both sides and seeing that how he can adapt, knowing what he knows about the other side. That's another important point of learning ASL um, and, and, just, and just playing the game is that perspectives change based on what side you're at. So uh, unless you guys have any other questions or comments or stuff like that, uh, we'll end the session here. Um, uh, I, I thank you guys for showing up and again this stuff here what we covered in this session this stuff here allowed me to formulate a deeper concept of play in my scenarios that I played in the West Coast Rumble which allowed me to have a slight advantage or plan for a slight advantage in each of those games mm -hmm. I don't think I would have known that without being here with you guys for three months talking about route as much as we do that doesn't happen to normal players. It just doesn't happen. So you guys are one of the prime reasons of me getting to that level of knowledge 
in the game where I could take it that one little one percent two percent more advantage of the game uh, the third scenario I did just like I did in costly baptism shove them forward if they break they're staying right there and rallying because I have so many units he can't he's not gonna fire on him you know the second scenario typical you know create better defensive sit back the third scenario break route offensively route offensively route offensively defensively and then just hold the line three separate route things like we covered here only yeah. because only because and i'm not bullshitting you here only because what we're doing here gentlemen what we're doing here when i say i learn more than you guys uh, i'm not i'm not talking bullshit I, i've learned a lot more about how the game is conducted i am much more confident much more aggressive in my game simply because I know the routing better than I did three months ago. That's all there is to it. And it's all because of you guys. I, I, I attest my victory in that particular uh, tournament to you guys. That's your guys' plaque, not my plaque. That's your guys' plaque. That's all there is to it. That's the bitter truth. Well, not bitter truth, but that's the sweet truth of it. Is um, you guys helped me to achieve uh, that trophy. So and I, I don't I really think I could have done it without you guys. Because I wouldn't have had that knowledge and to think about those things ahead of time. So so I thank you guys for that. But um with that, any questions and then we'll uh, call it a night. Great session as always, Stu. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks Stu. All right, all right, gentlemen. Uh, again, if you have any questions, if you think of something along the way, just post it in the uh, I don't even know, post it somewhere. You could you could just at Stu me or something like that or um wherever T tactical tuesday questions you know that's got we have a section here any questions come up that, that you can't think of now that you thought of later just post them in there and we'll all look at them and check it out all right I and, and take it easy gentlemen appreciate you guys and i will chat with you later thanks a lot for good coming good night everyone good. Good. have a good night thanks for joining us for this tactical tuesday you can see how questions that just come up during the course of the session um, however common they might be for a lot of players can lead into creating other discussions and showing other viewpoints based on um, the initial question, ignoring route terrain that's next to me. Okay, how can we expand upon that? How can we see that in other avenues of the game? I hope you saw some of that here and I hope you saw some of the techniques that were used to save those broken units that were going to die, period. And hopefully you can use those in your game. And uh, if you have any questions, join us at Tactical Tuesday, 1730 Pacific Daylight Time or Standard Time now um, on Tuesdays. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time on Basiling with Stu.